Right. And joining us now to talk more about this is the former acting director of National Intelligence, Ambassador Rick Grinnell. Ambassador Grinnell, great to see you as always. Thank you for having me. So, you know, this guy, uh, Krebs, he's been in the hot seat. He was on Capitol Hill testifying this week. He was you know, famously fired uh, by President Trump recently for calling the election one of the most secure in our history. Uh, this has been going on for nine months. How did he miss this? Look, uh, it's unexplainable, but uh, clearly we've had an ongoing attack on the U.S. government confidential information. And this is also, I think, uh, really a, an attack, a successful attack on all of the tools that the U.S. government uses to try to stop these cyber attacks. And so we need a full evaluation of how they got through the blockers, how they got through the software that is supposed to protect our confidential information, and how they uh, extensively took confidential information. We don't know the extent of it. I can tell you that U.S. government cybersecurity experts are all over this. They're working with the private sector as well. They've brought in private sector experts. So some of the United States' best and brightest are working on this. We don't know the extent, but we are the target, largely the target. There are up to seven to nine other countries that have been so far identified, but 75 percent of the attack uh, was on U.S. government uh, mm -hmm. systems. And so we were really clearly the target, and uh, we have to figure out why that is and how they got in. Uh, a lot of the uh, reporting it seems to indicate it's this Russian military associated group, Cozy Bear. Um, a lot of people also questioning the Trump response here. What should the response be if it is, in fact, tied directly to Cozy Bear and these Russian government hackers? Well, first of all, uh, we have to figure out what the extent is to, to know what the response is. Uh, there should be a response. There should be an appropriate response. We should make sure that uh, the individuals responsible are also prosecuted to the full extent of the law if they are able to be. Uh, we need to make this a diplomatic issue as well. Mm -hmm. But the response is going to be uh, according to how uh, much we know has been uh, how, how, how the attack, how deep it goes. So we first have to figure out how deep it is to know what the appropriate response should be. But make no uh, mistake, there should be an appropriate response. Is there any doubt from you that this was, in fact, the Kremlin? Look, I haven't seen all of the details, but uh, from what I've been able to read and hear from uh, experts inside the intelligence community, it has all the hallmarks of what Russia does, what they consistently have done. And so we've got to get much more sophisticated about the Russian cyber attacks. But let's also remember that, that Russia is not the only one. Russia is a problem, but the crisis truly is China and mm -hmm. what they're able to do, not only through cyber attacks, but through spying and leveraging. This is a, this is a spy attack, and we have to be very clear about uh, who is trying to come at us. Yeah, and that's an important point, too, because there seems to be different kind of uh, MOs when it comes to China and Russia when it comes to spying. You know, I think, too, about the 2015 Chinese hacking on the Office of Personnel Management. You mentioned their long game that they play. They try to find people that could be targets and could be turned into marks. And maybe Eric Swalwell was one of those people. Maybe that's how they got his name. Who knows? But I also want to talk, too, about this report we're expecting from the director of national intelligence, the current one, John Ratcliffe. He's refusing to sign off on the election meddling report as he seeks to include more viewpoints in the final analysis. That uh, report was due today. Uh, there's apparently some clash over the role China played in the 2016 election. But what, what are we going to learn when this report is finally released, Ambassador? Yeah, well, for one thing, I would kind of shift the paradigm here. I, I wouldn't say that John Radcliffe is refusing to sign off because that makes him sound a little bit like he's uh, passive. What I would say is, is that there are career intelligence officials uh, who are bringing forward evidence to say, here are foreign actors that have been involved in the election. And what John is trying to do is to figure out, uh, on these career intelligence officials, who has raw intelligence, and how do we get the intelligence assessed? Now, there's a, there's a big difference. And first of all, let's start from the aspect that intelligence is an estimate, and the public and the media need to understand it's an estimate. Sometimes we get it right, sometimes we get it wrong. But this is an estimate. 
what we do is we use raw intelligence and it goes through uh, the analysts and then they come up with an assessment. And so this is, uh, you know, like an opinion piece that's written mm. using facts. And so what John is trying to do is get all the facts. The China team has been predominantly and historically uh, much less partisan and much less vocal than the Russia team. I think that that's a problem. I think we have to redo the Russia and China team every now and then, bring in fresh water, not have stale viewpoints, but bring in fresh ideas. I would also say the Israel team needs to be uh, redone because they've missed a lot of the intelligence. They told us if we move the embassy to Jerusalem, for instance, that there would be war. We saw there was no war. Mm -hmm. So we need to be able to shake up these intelligence teams so that they're fresh, they have new ideas, and fresh eyes always look at the raw intelligence in a different way and have better analysis, I believe, than some people who just watch historically and say, well, uh, I'm not sure I believe that. Uh, right now, what Radcliffe is doing is listening to every career voice, trying to give every single person the ability to speak up. Then you analyze that information and you come up with a good assessment. Well, you know, which is to say, too, to get that fresh water in there, those fresh eyes on this stuff, you know, that's another way of saying it's time to drain the swamp. Uh, that's, what the t that's what we're talking about. We, we need new voices in there, see things a new way. And we know you did that when you were in there. Great to see you, Ambassador Rick Rennell. Thanks so much. We'll see you soon. Newsmax TV is now America's fastest growing cable news channel. We give you the real news you need. So subscribe to our YouTube channel and give us a thumbs up. If you like this video, share it with your friends. Newsmax TV streams live on YouTube for free. Newsmax TV, real news for real people.